Blog Talk Radio. Love a great book and engaging conversations? We're pleased to announce Coffee Talk Jazz Radio has come to television. You'll meet amazing authors who have overcome obstacles and insurmountable odds. We'll give you an all-access pass into their world. They'll share remarkable life's lessons on love, forgiveness, heroism, dreams, and their aspirations. Join veteran broadcaster and host, Ms. Bridget Lewis. She engages America's best thinkers and authors right here on Coffee Talk Jazz Radio and Coffee Talk Jazz Radio TV. Tune in to www.coffeetalkjazzradio.com and visit coffeetalkjazzradiotv.com. We'll see you there. edition of Coffee Talk Jazz Radio. I hope you guys are ready for this jazz party. I have an incomparable guest that I'm going to bring on shortly, but first, there are just a few housekeeping rules that you guys can use. Number one, we've got some gift giveaways. We are going to celebrate birthdays and so much more. If this is your first time to Coffee Talk Jazz Radio, I'd love to welcome you. Our show's call-in number is one 646 Four, four, four. Super excited that you all are here. So today is your chance to peek behind the curtain and to get up close and personal with your favorite contemporary smooth jazz artist, soul, funk, gospel, and so much more. Now, I see that folks are already logging on from the Eastern and Western Caribbean. I see the folks that are hanging out from London. Hello to our friends in Paris. We have a whole lot of love on the East Coast. Hello, I'm looking at folks that are hanging out in New York, Bedford Stuy, Hell Kitchen, Manhattan, Chappaqua. Hello. Now, I want to bring on this afternoon's guest. Her name is Deborah Silver, and I am loving her newest offering. It's called Glitter and Grit. She's my kind of girl. But let me tell you, her project album hit number one on iTunes jazz chart and number one on the Nielsen's chart traditional jazz album chart in the first week of release. I'd like to welcome the newest member to the Coffee Talk Jazz Party and my new friend, Deborah Silver. Hey, Deborah. Hey, it's great to to speak with you, Bridget. (laughs) It's so nice to finally meet you and a big shout out to your PR team, to Joanne, to Melissa, and all those folks um, that keep you sparkling, and you've got that all on your own with your gorgeous, beautiful voice. So. Oh, so sweet. I'm so lucky. <laughs> I have a wonderful team as well. <laughs> you do. Thank and you. so um, it's been very, very exciting to listen to every single track. My ear is, I am musically trained, and of course, I have my favorites. So we're going to jump into some of this delicious jazz. But my first question is, when did you first fall in love with music? Oh, gosh. It had to be, you know, obviously, not obviously, but when most people do, I think, as as a child. My mother was a classically trained uh, soprano, and uh, she went to uh, school for it, and um, she was really, uh, was in operas and um, had a beautiful operatic voice. And my father, before he went to Harvard Business School, he actually had his own band. He had a jazz band, and they called it Bobby and His Dixie Cats. And they actually met in Boston because my mom was at the New England Conservatory of Music. So I think nice. there's just music in my house <laughs> all the time. So, I, it, you know, I had to with parents like that. I, I had to grow up with music. <laughs> Absolutely. And that really does explain, you know, your versatility. I mean, listening to the variety of the songs, and of course, there are some, there's some original tunes, there's some classics, and there are some standards, you know, I've got rhythm, that old black magic. And I want to know, with this particular project, um, 
what was the deliberating process for selecting which track would actually meet the cut? Because there's so many amazing ones. I had a really hard time deciding which three I was going to load onto the playlist today. Oh, and I can't wait to hear what you chose. And I tell you what, you were right. It was so hard because we we used all these standards. I mean, the great American songbook has so many incredible mm-hmm. songs. And, you know, I think the reason why they're incredible is they can stand the test of time no matter what era. And, you know, and, and you can always change them a little bit and make them fit into whatever groove you're going. And we we uh, we did our thing, and uh, I was so fortunate to work with a wonderful group called Asleep at the Wheel. They're a uh, 10-time yeah. Grammy-winning Western swing group, and, and their leader, Ray Benson, produced this. And so what we really did is we, we feel like we brought a whole new – sound to the great american songbook and uh and just really you know took it and and slung it and it just it was so much fun creating this and to you're asking about how we cut it down it was so hard we we went back and forth (laughs) on on so many emails and lists and there were times my husband is not in the music world at all, thank goodness, because he cannot sing. He is completely toned down, <laughs> but he loves <laughs> music, and so he just kept listening. What about this one? What about this one? And and we had lists of, you know, there must have been over a hundred songs, and we kept narrowing it down. But I kept in in my mind playing through how would it sound done like a western swing tune, and uh, you know, how is it going to be? You know, is it going to make it a difference? Is it is it going to make it? the fun sounding album that I want to make. And, and that's how we came up with these 13 songs. That is so good. And I just want to give a shout out and a continued prayer um, for your um, legendary founder, Ray Benson, who you were talking about produced. And I understand from reading the press release that he was rushed, you know, struck by COVID. And I'm just excited to know that, you know, he's on the road to, you know, recovery, that was like very scary, like when I read about that. So it's like, I'm glad that your crew is okay. Uh, You know what? Uh, I am too, very thankful. And at the same time he had it, I don't even know if you knew that I had it as well. No. um, Yes. And Ray actually came through uh, a lot easier and faster than I did. Um, I was in isolation for 58 days. And oh. I was uh, sick. I couldn't even get a negative test for 40 days. I kept showing positive. And I had double pneumonia, and um, it really knocked me for a loop, unfortunately. In fact, um, I, I actually just got off a plane and made it within five minutes to get to a telephone to call in. And I was telling someone while I was on the plane, you know, just how fortunate I feel that that you know yeah. I I did make it through and uh, just kind of reliving the whole story because I was saying you know uh, they saw me I had so many papers out and you know trying to take care of stuff and I just said I'm catching up on my life I lost 58 days of my life but I got to tell you uh, I I I lost them but I'm glad to have my life back so gosh me um, too I'm so glad fortunate. that you're recovery and that you are. Moving forward, I know that um, a lot of people did not take, you know, COVID-19 or the pandemic very seriously. And I tell, you know, even my team members, you know, we go out and we have these different conversations. I'm like, you know, you've got to mask up. You've got to be a party of one. So for those of you who are listening, I definitely believe in practicing social distancing. I definitely believe in taking my emergency, my immunity boost, you know, exercise, like all those good things. And you've got to take your health very, very seriously, because I still don't think they know how people actually really catch COVID. I mean, there's just so much information out there. It's like, it's overwhelming. But again, I'm glad that you're on the men. And I must say, if you hadn't shared that with me, listen to your tone now, and then, you know, hearing your um, music, I would have never guessed that you would have had challenges vocally, because I'm certain, you know, when you've got double ammonia, I mean, that's your lungs. That's where your breath and everything, you yeah. know, it, 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 it comes from. So I'm so glad that you're on the other side, you know, of all of that. And I can say when I heard your music and I've heard a lot over the past Aww. 14 years, <laughs> you're I sick honestly, of me now. <laughs> no, 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 not, not even, not even close to that. I can honestly say Aww, when, thank you. 
when I think about like the top, I have like my top 25 best female jazz vocalists. I definitely would put you in the same category, in the same running. I mean, love Billie Holiday, Ella Fitzgerald, you know, um, Sarah Vaughn, Betty Carter. I come from a musical family as well. Like, I sing a little bit, but I don't sing like you. And so when I heard your music, I was loving it because I'm listening to the tonality. I'm listening to the rhythm, oh my the melody, gosh. the chord, on all of, um, just just as a, as a totality, listening to what instruments are being played. I can tell when keyboards are being played or when it's percussion being played or if it's a drum machine. I mean, I've been doing this for a super long time. So I was jazzed, no pun intended, when Joanne reached out to me and say, hey, we have this amazing artist, Deborah. So, but I'm like, I, I'm like, I've heard of Deborah, but I hadn't had the pleasure. And so I'm just excited oh. that you're on. Thank you with so, Talk. so much. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You, the, wait, who you just compared me to, like, that is the biggest compliment anyone in the world could give me. And the fact that you, with, with all of your knowledge and training and talent, that, that you compare me to those greats because those are certainly the greats that, that uh, I listen to and that, you know, that, to me, <laughs> that's a level that uh, it, it's hard to ever find, you know, to, to reach up. And that's an a, a aspiring level for all of all of us jazz jazz singers, along with Dinah Washington yeah. and just, you know, the greats. Nothing exactly. like that. Exactly. Dinah Washington, Dinah Carl, Nina Simone, Peggy oh. Lee. I mean, I think about the – the deep yeah. emotional connection that they're able to make with an audience. And that's what I was listening for, you know, when I was hearing, you know, some of your tones, of course, Fly Me to the Moon, of course, Deep in the Heart of Texas. I'm a Southern girl. I'm from Houston. So I was loving, oh, I was loving everything. That, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Southern girl too. I am, I am from Jackson, Mississippi. So it was so oh much fun to, to get back to my roots, and and you know I I didn't have to hold back if you know people weren't saying you sound too yeah. southern and that sing it again. I was able to let all my accent come out. <laughs> I didn't have to worry about it in in this album. So it was it was uh it was just so nice. I felt like I had finally come home. Absolutely. Album. Would you say I've got two questions, but I'll ask you them one at a time. With a fragile mm-hmm. economy, with 60 million plus people being out of work and with COVID-19, um, would you say that people look to music to give them hope? Well, first of all, I, I just have to say my heart is so broken for everybody. Everybody has been touched by COVID-19. Whether they caught it or not, they were all touched mm-hmm. by it. and. Yeah. Uh, I I do hope uh, that that music can give people hope. I think um, from from what I hear in the music business, people are downloading like crazy. And you know, in the beginning, mm-hmm. that's that's what people just kept doing. They just kept listening to music. Mm-hmm. And 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 I'd like to say, you know, I I think that music does give people hope. It gives them a uh, almost a way to. You know, there's one of my songs on the album called Get Happy, and it says, forget your troubles, come on, get happy. Mm. And I, I think music can take you away for a little while, even if you have a lot of troubles, if you can just, you know, take a moment to, to breathe and to, and to just, you know, relax, whether you put it on when you're, when you're going to sleep or you put it on when you're, you're with your partner or you just put it on when you just want some quiet time to, you know, read a book or, or just enjoy. Uh, and then, you know, if you want to dance and have a great time, that's what glitter and grits, my new album is all about is, <laughs> is, is just about pepping people up. And, and the truth is, you know, I, I just, I feel so sad for the way the world is right now that I, I am thrilled that this album has such happy and positive music and it's it's very uplifting and joyous in in the way that asleep at the wheel helped me with with the music and the songs and so i'm really just hoping that it really can bring people some happiness through the gift of song in a light where these you know these problems we we have everybody's facing just you know put a little smile on everybody's face cuz uh when you when you hear glitter and grits my latest album uh 
I, I hope it'll it'll just you know give you a little pep in your step. Absolutely. So I'm going to ask you this other question, let you think about it, but I want to get into some of this juicy, delicious music. Um, mm-hmm. The question is this. Let's take a page from the movie Back to the Future, and if you could go back and pull a musician from another era to sing with, who would it be and why? So okay, that's the question. I want to do a double-double, and I want to go ahead and play um, fly me to the moon and after you've gone. So that's the question. Let's do a double double. We'll be back with more good coffee and great chat with my amazing guest, the incomparable Deborah Silver. Let's take a listen to Fly Me to the Moon. <laughs> What spring is like on Jupiter and Mars? In other words, hold my hand. In other words, darling, kiss me. Fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore.
<laughs> wow. If you are just if you guys are just joining the Coffee Talk Jazz Party, welcome. We just had a double shot of espresso. And, yes, right now I'm actually drinking an ice-blended uh, carmi macchiato, and it is so delicious. And I am talking with my very special guest, the incomparable Deborah Silver. And you just heard a track from her uh, brand-new project. is called Glitter and Grit. And I wish you guys could see how fast she looks as she's sitting on this gorgeous Shape lounge. It's not really a shape, but I'm loving. I'm loving the orange satin, and she's all glittered up. She's all smiles, and with that voice, of course, why wouldn't she be? And so, Aww, I'm loving, loving, loving the music. And so thank the question you. was, you're welcome. Before the break, let's take a page from the new be Back to the Future. If you could go back and pull a musician from any era, and sing along sweet melodies. Who would it be and why? <laughs> okay, well, that, that answer is, comes right to me, but I have to say I'm excited. Uh, I loved hearing what your choices were of your songs that you like. I, I, uh, that that almost like being in love. Uh, everyone who's been in the jazz world has contacted me and said, this is just so jazzy. We love this one. So uh, I, was, I was excited to hear you chose that and Fly Me to the Moon, too. Um, all right. That's it. Uh, my choice of who I would just love to have met and oh my gosh to record with her forget it I I, uh, I would be on cloud nine it's Dinah Washington I mentioned her earlier she, uh, she's a fellow southerner she's from Tuscaloosa Alabama where she was born but she, she moved to Chicago as a child uh, and I am from Jackson Mississippi but the reason why I, I just I feel the reason why I love her so much Besides just her voice and her coolness, she's such a mm-hmm. uh, an amazing lady. She, she her she sang from her heart and her gut, and I think that um you know she was so heartfelt with her lyrics. She really understood the lyrics and what they're about. And to me, lyrics are so important. But you could almost oh, picture yeah. it like a movie as she sang. You could just see the whole song what it was about and what I think is so cool uh, about her is that she she recorded a wide variety of styles including blues and R&B and traditional pop and uh, I believe she gave herself the title of queen of the blues and then uh, she was actually Mm. unfortunately (laughs) uh, much later on in her life she was inducted into the Alabama Jazz Hall of Fame and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and I love that she moved from genre to genre because because that's basically what I do. I mean, I I have a show, and um, well, it, it, I, I should say I used to have a show, but <laughs> it'll be back up. Uh, COVID has kind of canceled everybody's shows out there. But um, in in my show, I I do move from genre to genre. I go from country to blues to jazz to pop to. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's Broadway. I mean, I I hit a little bit of everything, but I always kind of attack it with with that kind of jazzy flavor because jazz is is basically, you know, what underscores all of them. But the fact that uh, Dinah uh, just did so many things and with that voice, I mean, she's she's right up there for me as a musician. Oh, my gosh. And what I was going to say with uh, Fly Me to the Moon, I mean, there's so many people who've sampled you know, the song from everybody from Sinatra to, you know, Count Basie. Um, oh, gosh. And there's just so many people that I, I, I think Joe, Joe Harnell, just so many people who I can't even, like, think of that even come to mind. Right. I've heard so many different ver- right. versions of it. So and many. It, and, it still, and it still sounds so good every time it's sung. And that's the great thing about that classic, you know, that classic, classic right. music. Um and when I think about your voice, I like the fact that you said you can you can move from jazz to country to just all kinds of genres. I think it's really, really important, I said, that an artist, that a song stylist, a lyricist, I think it's very, very important that they are diverse in their career simply because you never know who is going to call upon you? For example, I can use the great uh, Grammy winner, Vanessa Williams, who I've had the pleasure of working with. And I think Love about Vanessa. her career. 
she is amazing. She is very much her character on, um, remember Ugly Betty? She was very much, that is very, Mm -hmm. very Vanessa. She didn't have to stretch too far to adapt um, that character. (laughs) But my point is loving her voice, looking at her on Broadway, looking at her on television, looking at, you know, her song Save the Best for Last and some of her other great classic hits and she can scat and she does jazz and she can does R&B. She can does soul. And so when you said that, it made me think about other artists who have the same versatility that you have. I think that's important because that'll keep you working when you're diverse like that. Would you agree? (laughs) Oh, well, I I think, you know what? I think that when you have a show and people come to see the show and the more that you can show them and, you know, you're, you, it's almost like you have something for everyone in there and, you know, everybody that comes obviously is a music lover, but somebody may love country a little more than they love opera or vice versa. But, you know, when you kind of combine it all with a, with a different style, I just think uh, it makes for an entertaining show. And and that's kind of what I do with my own shows is I just put it like a big party for the audience and, you know, uh, get everybody involved and, and it's, um, you know, goes back to that word fun. I think I think shows and songs and music should be fun. And and I've been really fortunate with this last album with the glitter and grits that you're playing from. It uh, it did hit number one in uh, current traditional jazz and jazz, and it was number one for a few days. It carried the iTunes jazz yeah. charts. Yeah. What? And I believe me, I was so thrilled. But what what tickled me so much is that. Recently, I I just got an email saying that it hit number one on the Western Swing charts now, and so I said, "Yeehaw! Wow. Look at that! It's it's crossed over, and uh, so it's been um just it's, it's been really cool to see the people who are who are liking this, and it's it's interesting because the the Western Swing fans, and and it's even being played on the country stations as well. It's being played in three genres: in, in Americana, in country, and in jazz. And it's interesting that the people who are, you know, in, in listening to Americana country music may not be as familiar as the jazz listeners to the Great American Songbook. And I feel really, really good about the fact that I'm introducing this music to them. And uh, and so many of them have said, "Oh, that's cool. Did you write that?" And 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 you know, it's easy for me to say, "Well, only written by George and Ira Gershwin." <laughs> but thanks for the compliment. <laughs> but but um, but it, it is neat. It's really cool to 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 be able to be in different genres. But of course, jazz is jazz is where where my home is, just like yours. I know. Wow, I absolutely love jazz. And when I started this jazz journey, God, like. 14 years ago, we have a series. Wow. The ladies were saying, well, hey, well, wait a minute, Miss Bridget. Well, wait a minute. What's going on here? Where, you know, with the, with the divestiture, with the music uh, industry changing tremendously, uh, even before online was a thing and Zoom and all of that, and I decided, you know what, because I love jazz so much, because I come from a musical family as well, I was like, you know, I said, I really want to come up, I said, with, a non-traditional radio station, if you will, because I wanted artists to really be able to come on and really share their heart. You know, I wanted to know the process behind uh, why the songs were selected on the CD, why they selected the different musicians, how they, um, what was the impetus behind some of the lyrics, you know, that were chosen. And so this is why I started Coffee Talk Jazz Radio. So the ladies were saying, well, hey, well, can you do something for us? And so we came up with um, our Women in Music series, where we would just really showcase this immense talent from jazz vocalists to um, contemporary artists to um, guitarists to pianists to saxophone players. I've worked with everyone from percussionist Sheila E. again to Vanessa Williams to um, First Lady of Smooth Jazz, Gail Johnson, who was uh, musical director for Norman Brown. I can go on and mm-hmm. on. And then there's Deborah yeah. Silver, who was in a category <laughs> all on her own with all these number ones, and you're getting all these records, and I'm super proud to know you. And the fans are saying, can you play uh, another song? So, yes, I will. Um, for those of you who want to call in, again, our show's call-in number is 515-605-9793. I have one gift giveaway you can't win if you don't call in. So I'm going to go ahead and play 
uh, almost like being in love by our very good friend and special guest, two-time number one Billboard vocalist, Deborah Silver. Let's take a listen. September 21st here in Los Angeles. It's about 75 degrees. And I've got my very special guest, Deborah Silver. If you guys are just tuning in, you're late, but I'm glad you caught us because we've been listening to tracks from Glitter and Grit. And so, Deborah, please share with our fans and listeners how can they book you virtually? Where can they find you on social media? Oh, I'd love to tell them. First of all, I spell my name the biblical way, D E B O R A H, like Deborah. And mm-hmm. uh, they can I, they can go and find me on my website, and that is DeborahSilverMusic dot com, like DeborahSilverMusic dot com. And uh, on Facebook, I am Deborah Silver again, like Deborah D E B. O R A H. I always refer to it as a biblical way. My parents, uh, you know, were thinking Bible when they named me. And uh, and on Instagram, it is Deborah B Silver. And on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and then Twitter, it's Deborah Silver uh, that they can find me and um, or Deborah Silver Music. And uh, I would love to hear from, from your listeners, and please write to me and tell me that you heard me on this great show. I want to know what coffee everybody's drinking. I have hazelnut right now. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> but uh, I, I would really just love to hear from from uh, from everyone, so please let me know. And, and the way you can find this music is it's it's streaming on all of of the platforms. I mean, uh, I don't know. Am I allowed to say any of them, Bridget? Absolutely. The platform. Yeah, oh, okay. Well, it's on yeah. iTunes and Spotify and Deezer. I mean, you name it, it's there. If you can't find it, 
go to my website. But it's also on Amazon. If you would like to buy the physical CD, we have a special, uh, we have, we call it pandemic pricing. And we have really mm. uh, lowered it right now. We're, we're holding it. It's all below $5 uh, to, to get it. And uh, on Amazon, it's a physical CD. And I, I, I still, I guess I'm old fashioned. I, I like the stuff you can hold and, and right. put in a player. And I, <laughs> but my, my favorite reason is because you can thumb through the books. And so I, you know, I have everybody's yeah. pictures and I have the behind the scenes and the books with everything. And, and I was so fortunate to have these incredible uh, musicians. A, a lot of people were current musicians in Ray Benson's band, Asleep at the Wheel, and others were former, such as uh, an incredible pianist who actually started Asleep at the Wheel with Ray. His name is Floyd Domino. And uh, Floyd was at the piano and then uh we had um the, my harmonica player we brought in for a couple of songs is actually the harmonica player if you've ever been to a Willie Nelson concert he is right there wow. right he's right there in front next to Willie like not in the back he stands like side by side with Willie and his name is Mickey Raphael and he played harmonica on Don't Get Around Much Anymore and Deep in the Heart of Texas and uh, just all these musicians, they were so talented. And the, the cool part about it is we just got in the studio and just started playing and trying it different ways. And, you know, then something clicked and, uh, you know, everybody was happy and, and we moved on. And um, it was it was recorded in Austin, Texas. And we've had just so many great comments from people because people think it's you know kind of a little different than what's out there that that we're starting to talk about maybe there's a glitter and grits part two coming out <laughs> so uh, that sounds a lot of things to so talk about good. wow um being that i'm from born in harris county but in houston texas yep. we know all about yep. grits and cornbread that's the real, right. <laughs> real the real cornbread which was hot water cornbread and greens and neck bones and sweet potatoes. So the real Oh yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Growing up in, in Jackson, Mississippi. My my mother, in fact I tell people when they they uh you know, write to me, they get to be uh in a drawing to receive my mother's cheese grits casserole recipe. What? And uh, yeah, and that I and that I'll uh, go with them in a personal chat and tell them how to cook it. And in fact, my mother brought it over last night in a in a, a covered Pyrex dish that belonged to my grandmother. Oh, and my mother Lordy, brought it over, yeah, and, and, and believe song. it or not, uh, yeah. And so for breakfast, everybody got their cheese grits this morning before we we left, and you know everybody went their way. But it was it's a good uh, wholesome meal. But let me tell you the reason why I named the album Glitter and Grits is. I'm kind of known in the in 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 the industry where I'm performing is uh, I usually can make it through quite a few gown changes during a a one hour show or an hour and a half show, <laughs> and it's funny because so many people, Bridget, say, "Ma'am, you know, we came just to see what you were wearing," <laughs> and if you go to my website, you'll see what I'm talking about. But I'm I'm known for being in glitter, and then. You know, I think grits is just the salt of the earth, people. And, you know, besides that, it's a great Southern food. And I was dealing with a wonderful Southern uh, group of musicians. You know, I, I grits really is about, I think, about character and about, you know, standing up and believing in things and just being a down-to-earth, really solid, solid person. And um, and that, that's who I, I felt I work with, with, with these guys, you know, and, and they used to say uh, – you, you know, like uh, with glitter, like with the with the music, this music is so glittery. I mean, the Great American Songbook, these songs are just such traditional standard jazz tunes that, that everybody knows. You know, when you think of Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers dancing to them, but at the same hand, uh, well, on the other hand, actually, you have the, the Western swing uh, fans that would go to the dance halls and they would dress up in their finest Western wear and dance. So it kind of brings out the glitter in everyone for a group of people that are just down to earth, uh, you know, that are, that are I, I feel are all very gritty, as I say. So uh, I, I love <laughs> combining the two worlds. I absolutely love that because I'm a girl about all things that are sparkly. And this is what my granddaughter, who calls me Glamaw, because she says, Glamaw, oh. she says, you're, she's nine years old. 
with her precocious little that. self. And she just says, she just says, Glamour, she says, everything is so sparkly. Everything is so shiny from in my office. I have to send you a picture. Uh, I, oh, have I, love to see I have a chandelier in my office. I literally have a chandelier in my garage in my workout space, oh. like for real, for real, for real. <laughs> it's like that. That I want to really see. <laughs> I, I got. I I promise you, I'm going to take a picture. And I'm like, oh my lordy. I am um, so want to see this. That's it, great. We're also call we we also call it the shed because in Texas we had a shed where you have to go and get the we call it That's poly right. top back in the. Back in the day, which was absolutely. Dr. Pepper, root beer. So oh, absolutely. I am here. I am here for all things glittery, and I'm here for mm-hmm. the grits and the cheese. And you had me salivating when you said you brought it over in a Pyrex. For anyone, if you're under 40, you don't know what a Pyrex is. <laughs> but the fact that you brought it over in a Pyrex and and the, and the grits have cheese on them, and then it had the cup towel over it. I said, I'm already done, and I'm hungry. <laughs> Oh yeah, well I I will get you that recipe. It's got a little jalapeno in it oh too, so gosh. a little spicy. Oh uh, man, this is gonna be so good because my granddaughter and I, I'm teaching her how to cook, but I started her too. So she's got she's got quite like a little recipe book that we still keep. Oh like my a little, gosh. We write them on the little four by six index cards like in the little square little box just like my grandma oh, great idea. and my mom oh my gosh yeah yeah so I'm all for it and I promise to send you pictures of me and my granddaughter in the kitchen you're going to say there is no way that this little child knows how to cook like that but I have everything on <laughs> a video <laughs> yeah well, well watch out world I think we've got the na- next great chef it sounds like in your granddaughter Oh, my gosh. And so I have three more questions for you. I mean, this is so good. We could okay. go on and on. So absolutely. what would you tell an inexperienced young jazz vocalist on their way to the top? What would you tell them about the landmines in the music business? What should they watch out for? There's a lot of landmines out there. And it's not just about... In- oh, my God, I want to get a hit record. It was like, tell them what the real deal is. You know, I think there are a lot of landmines out there. You're right. I think that, um, you know, you, you really need to find someone that you trust. Who can yes, you and yes. You. And, you know, there's nothing better than learning from experienced people. And I, I say I'm still a student. I mean, I'm learning every day. And, I mean, I learned yeah. so much from just working with Ray Benson. This is their 50th year with the Sleep at the Wheel. And so, you know, when That's Deborah awesome. showed, showed up, you know, I, I had a lot to learn. And the other person who I've been so fortunate to learn from was the person who produced my prior album. And I'm sure a lot of the jazz fans are aware of Steve Tyrell. And Steve oh, yeah. uh, produced. The, the gold standards, which was my album previous to this, and I I gotta tell you, we were we were thrilled because that actually landed number one on the Billboard charts, and uh, we you know it it was it was something we loved working on, but I gotta tell you, the whole time my eyes were wide open and I was just taking everything in, and I think that that's if you're a new artist working your way to the top. You really need to um, learn from the good and learn from the bad. You know, you, you need yeah. to learn. I've always felt no matter who you are, if you're in whatever world, whatever business you're in, I think there's nothing better than experience. But, you know, when when I hear something that's not great, I don't mean music. I mean like something that, you know, didn't work out or a sad story or something happened to someone. I say, oh, that's horrible, but let's all learn from that, you know, learn, you know, you know, work around that. Don't, don't do what that person did. You know, somebody stepped off the curb and got hit by a car. Obviously that's the worst thing in the world, but do you learn from that? Don't step off the curb when, when there's cars going by, but those are obviously, I mean, I'm, I'm giving you an obvious example, but uh, I'm just saying you, you really need to, to be able to, to take it all in, but you, the best thing is if you can be as fortunate as I have been and, and have people who, uh, you know, are there with experience, who are willing to guide you and and to be able to, uh, you know, as as Ray and Steve did of both my producers, to, to take me under their wing. 
and um, I'm I'm learning every day. Obviously, you listen to as many people as you possibly can to to learn, uh, and I think that's how come I ended up with so many different genres. Because growing up, my favorite music was R and B. So I can't sing something without having R and B licks in it, uh, you know, and, and uh, that's just that's just where my brain goes. But it's all what you're influenced with when you're young, I think. Wow, you definitely said a mouthful. So now I was going to say I want to put you in the hot seat, but the seat won't be too hot. So, <laughs> man, um, your songs have literally started a party. I'm loving the comments that I'm getting from the fans that are tuning into the show. So we know you oh, love grits. Are there any more other wonderful comfort foods that you love? Oh, make for special no. occasions. Easter, I'm, Christmas, I'm a meat. I'm a, I, I am a meat and potatoes gal. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, steak and French fries, baked potato, anything like that. But you want to know what my favorite food is? You'll laugh. I make it all the time. Popcorn. I make popcorn and what? I make it with olive oil, <laughs> so it's healthy. And my dogs, man, when they smell that popcorn popping, they just follow me. They're gonna, they would run into furniture because their heads are up the whole time, looking, making sure, you know, seeing if I'm gonna drop something. <laughs> so that's my favorite all-time food: popcorn. I could eat it every day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> Wow. So I have to ask you this, being I just celebrated my 60th birthday on September the 17th. What's your best beauty secret? Well, happy birthday to you, first of all. (laughs) And oh, you're so, you're so, so sweet. Happy birthday. You know what is my secret? And I don't know if it's a secret or not. I'm happy to share it. Uh, Everybody (laughs) spends so much money on creams and lotions. But you know what? I use Vaseline. Is that crazy? Wow. And I, I always, nope. um, you know, I, I love I love taking my makeup off with it. I love leaving it on my eyes. And you want to hear something that's so funny is that, like, I have always done that, like, my whole life. And um, my husband, one day, you know, we're talking. He was talking about his grandmother. And he said, you won't believe this. Do you know what she always put on her eyes? She put Vaseline. And I said, oh, my gosh. So, and I never got to meet his, his grandmother. Unfortunately, she passed away before we were married. So now I feel like we're kindred spirits with the, with the Vaseline, but that's my, that's my beauty secret. It's easy. And, uh, Hey, look, it works great. Take a makeup off. (laughs) Wow. I like, uh, you get to this point in your life, you get to this age where I like things that are just real simple, easy peasy, easy and breezy. And absolutely, absolutely. I think that you're a breath of fresh air. I am so beyond excited that I've had the opportunity to chat with you live today about your wonderful project, uh, Glitter and Grits. Please let the fans know um, what's next for you and then how can they book you? How can they get in contact with your PR team? I know you shared your information on social media, but if someone wants to book you for a virtual uh, virt- virtual living room concert or anything like that, how can our fans get in contact with your PR team? Well, uh, the first thing is they've just come to my website. Everything is there okay. that they'll be able to get in touch with me. And um, they can also write to contact at com. Deborah as in Deborah, silvermusic.com. And uh, what's next for me, i got to tell you, I, I'm so excited. A, a few things. Uh, number one, Steve Tyrell and, work, and I are working on some duets, and um, I've already recorded a duet with Bill Medley of the Righteous Brothers, and uh, Tony Orlando and I, remember Tony Orlando from Ty- a Yellow, Yellow Ribbon yeah. Round the Old Oak Tree? Well, Tony and I are, are doing a song together, and uh, Tony heard my song, uh, That Old Black Magic, that was is on this Glitter and Grits album, and he sent me a a text on the phone telling me how much he loved it and how he thought uh, Keely and Louie Prima would have loved it. And, and, and he, you know, was, was really nice and complimentary about it because no one did it better than Keely and Louie. And, uh, and so when he wrote me, I meant to write him back, thank you. But instead I accidentally sent him my grocery list for Costco. So there you go. That's another <laughs> uh, warning. Be careful before you hit send. <laughs> That's another, uh, I guess, yeah. advice to people. But um, Tony and Bill Medley and um, Bobby Rydell from the, 
you know, for, they they named Rydell High School after him in Greece, the movie Greece. He's he's a, a great singer from the the fifties, oh, uh, wow. uh, and um, a, a, a lot a lot of other people were were putting together duets. And then while I was sick with COVID, I came up with a song that I wanted to use to help others. And so I wrote it with Dennis Lambert, who is a twelve time Grammy nominee uh, composer, and he wrote so many songs everybody knows like ain't no woman like the one i got and um right. uh, we built this city you know for uh we built this city on rock and roll and he wrote night shift for the commodores uh he wrote uh one tin soldier you know the song listen children to a story that was written long ago uh he he did yeah. rhinestone cowboy for glenn campbell he did pink cadillac for for natalie cole he rewrote and produced that for her and so we wrote a song together and all the proceeds uh, are going to the Jazz Foundation of America to help so many musicians who are struggling from from COVID and, and there's going to be more of that so please tell people to stay in touch and stay in touch and watch my social media under Deborah Silver Music on uh, Twitter, Deborah Silver on Facebook and, and Instagram and um, we'll be coming out with that soon and it's got some incredible musicians on it such as Steve Jordan who's a very renowned drummer and Tom Scott uh was on it with with the, the horn arrangements and um even Mickey Raphael who was played harmonica on my last album played on this one so uh we're we're getting some some uh exciting people to sing on it and it's, I'm hoping it's going to end up kind of like a mini we are the world where it'll help a lot of a lot of people wow. and um that that was my dream as I was sick. I just said, you know, there's a reason that I survived and there's a reason God let so many of us survive. And, you know, it made me even more so want to come out and make a difference in people's lives besides sharing this, you know, fun and happy and upbeat music. I, I just wanted to do something where it can really help because there's so many people suffering right now. Wow. I totally get it. When you, um, talked about all the things that you were doing uh, in terms of like giving back. I just want to share a little bit about what we have been doing over the last eight years. And it's in honor of my late mother, the reason why I initially started it, coming again from a family of educators. So we started what's called the Gift of Music Foundation for Children to honor my late mother and my late uncle. Both of them were educators, both musically um, inclined. And so it has really has been You know, my mission and passion to provide music enrichment opportunities for youth in our neighborhood. And so I said, well, let me go to LAUSD, which is is Los Angeles Unified School District. I said, let me see if I can talk with them. I want to see if I can partner with them. And so once I really presented, you know, and really shared my heart of what we wanted to do, we referred to the endeavor as a worthy challenge with a joyful reward. And so... One of the greatest rewards had been to really recognize that a child's life can forever be changed by receiving just musical instructions, whether it's singing chorale or being exposed to a variety of compositions or different genres of music, as you were sharing, you know, before. And so um, what we had done is we had selected what's called a family of five schools here in Los Angeles, and we were trying to find out um, kids really need it. And what we found is that the music programs were the last to be added and the first to be cut, and that, of course, you know, t- t- taking music out of schools was the absolute wrong thing to do. Because right. If you think about it, there would be no composers such as Quincy Jones. There wouldn't be a Deborah right. Silver. There wouldn't be all these amazing, amazing artists that are now out there because someone took the time to build a partnership in the community and then add the music component. And so we actually partnered with um, Cannonball Music, uh, a funny guitar, uh, National Association of Music Merchants, and I said, hey, guys, we need support. We really need help. And uh, we were even giving instruments. Um, I was looking at some pictures last night. I mean, man, it, like, brought a tear to my eye where Randy wow. Jackson, who was one of the coaches from The Voice, had actually donated five of his signature guitars. They were all uh, numbered oh, and signed, and, then, and those were actually auctioned off so we could raise money for the kids could, in fact, get back into the programs. And then uh, the musicians and I, we would go into the schools once a quarter, and we would talk to the kids about why music 
is important, but more so than that, just music as a mark of memories where we bring everybody together. There was no divisiveness, nothing, nobody was divided, whether you were black, white, country, gay, straight, or whatever it was. We saw that music was this one thing that was bringing all these kids, you know, together. And I'm so sorry that the schools are closed down, that the musicians are really struggling yeah. to really make, you know, uh, ends meet. And I can't wait until they open back up so we can really continue the great work, Absolutely. you know, that we started, you know, eight years ago. It's, it's, it's hard, but it really, I'm really impassioned, you know, about really helping these, you know, children, because I know what music has done, you know, for me. So I just wanted to put that you know, out there and say um, the coffee is just about down to a simmer, and you have been an incredible (laughs) guest, just a wonderful guest on the show. (laughs) I'm so appreciative that you had. You're welcome. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me, and and my goodness, uh, number one, seeing your picture, girl, you do not look anywhere near 60, so just enjoy that. You don't even need that. You don't even need that Vaseline. <laughs> but um, I, I'm just, I, I, I love what you are doing, and that's so important to me, and I actually, uh, when the when the schools are back and you've got your program up, uh, I want you to call me because I'd love to help out any way I can if there's uh you know, someone or, or uh, a class that, that would like to um, spend some time, I could spend some time maybe helping and, and mentoring some people as oh, well. Wow. I'd, it'd be an wow. honor to to do that. And uh, that and I just, I hope. Amazing. Oh, and, and I just hope that the school's back and get back and everybody's safe. And I just want to wish everybody, you know, the best who's listening and to please stay safe and, and do whatever you can. Wash your hands a thousand times like me and just keep trying to protect yourself. I know how I caught it. I had a big show and someone actually used my microphone and I was very oh. careful and, um, and that, and they wow. had it. And, 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 and so I, I know, I know the exact moment that I caught it, but, um, so everybody just stay safe, and I hope that people have a chance to listen to my latest album, Glitter and Grits. And please, I really would love for people to contact me on social media or write to me on my website. Again, you can um, write to contact at com, and they will get it to me. And uh, I'd just love to hear your thoughts about what you think about the album and, you know, any uh, new ideas for new music to to do and um we do have this new song coming out that i i wrote for the first time i was so excited to to be uh to start my first song i ever wrote we wrote with a 12-time grammy nominee so that's like an honor mm. for 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 me but um we're we're hoping to raise some money to really help to really help people who who are suffering and then um i've got my duets coming out next but right now i just really want everybody to hear glitter and grits because the truth is It's just a a cheerful way. I mean, the incomparable swing style that the Grammy-winning Asleep at the Wheel, their 10-time Grammy-winning band, the way they played allowed me to recreate these songs in just such a happy and upbeat way. And I I just, uh, I want the world to to, uh, be able to hear it because I think it's something the world can really use right now. The world needs a lot of positive and happy music and so I'd love for, for people to, to hear it and put a smile on their face. Well, I absolutely agree. And so I want to say with our fans that have tuned in, you all, thank you so, so very much. With music in our hearts and with jazz in our souls, we want to thank you, our friends, fans, and supporters, for making Coffee Talk Jazz Radio number one and award-winning. We love you for listening, and we'll see you next time. We're going to go ahead and take it uh, out uh, again with my very special guest, Deborah Silver. Bye for now, guys. Bye-bye.